Good morning everyone. So let us continue our topic last week about deviation. So last week we talked about what is deviation, its uses, and what are the types of it. So since na topic na or na discuss na ni Miss Bailon ang lexical and grammatical deviation, let's proceed to semant to semantic deviation. So what is semantic deviation? In semantic deviation, it is important to deal with what we call troops. Semantics is a branch of linguistics that studies the meaning of the word of words in language. So, for the basic definition, semantics is a study of meanings. So, semantics are classified largely into three sections. So, number one, we have semantic oddity. Number two transference of meaning and number three we have honest deception so under semantic oddity we have pleonism so before that semantic oddity means the bizarreness of expression or yung mga kakaibang expression so under semantic od semantic oddity we have we have five types of it so number one we have pleonism the use of more more words than are necessary to convey meaning either as fault or style for emphasis so pleonism is a redundant and tautological phrase or clause example i saw it with my own eyes seeing is of course an action done with the eyes and therefore adding with my own eyes is redundant and unnecessary for the context. So the purpose of Pleonism is using more than words. So gumagamit tayo ng maraming words or salita. Then you need to either it's accidentally or de deliberately. It is used in the purpose by the speaker to emphasize something or clarify an idea through repetition. So, Pleonism helps the audience or listener to remember the main ideas as they listen or read. So, that is for Pleonism. Number two, we have periprasis. So, periprasis, use of more words to say something that are necessary. So, pag sinabi use of more words, gumagamit tayo ng maraming salita to say something that are necessary to evoke a certain meaning. So, for example, yes, I'll be there. The phrase, yes, I'll be there. Pwede naman natin sabihin, yes, I'll be there. But to make it more believable, mas madami yung ginagamit nating salita. So, instead of saying, yes, I'll be there, we will say, I believe I am able to attend on that send event. So, to make it more believable, gagamit tayo ng maraming salita. So, that is for periprasis. So, number three, we have tautology. So, tautology is a phrase or expression in which the same thing is said twice in different words. So, said twice. Para siyang repetition ng isang word or salita. So, for example, Bill will win the election or he will not win the election. Kung mapapansin natin, meron dyang mga naulit na salita o naulit na words. So, another example is um, in my opinion, I think, so your opinion and you think, so parang pareho lang siya ng meaning but uh, magkaiba yung ginamit na magkaiba yung ginamit na salita. So, that is for tautology. You just need to say, said it twice, uh, same meaning but different words. So, number four, we have oxymoron. So, next slide. Oxymor an oxymoron is a self-contradicting word or group of words. So, an oxymoron is self-contradicting word or a group. Sometimes, oxymoron intend to create a new meaning. So, ang oxymoron ay nagkikreate ng mga bagong salita 
or bagong meaning. So, two words or ideas which are contradictory. So, for the example, we have a pretty ugly, open secret, so fine mess, bitter sweet, or yung parang two words na magka salungat or opposite. So, number four, that is for oxymoron. So, number five, we have paradox. So, paradox is a statement or argument that seems to be contradictory or to go against common sense but yet perhaps still true. So, paradox is a statement that or appears illogical or self-contradictory but upon investigation might actually be true or plausible. So, take note guys. Take note that a paradox is different from oxymoron. So, magkaiba silang dalawa. A paradox is an entire phrase or sentence, whereas an oxymoron is a combination of two words. So, dalawa lang. Dalawang words, dalawang salita, just two words. So, for example, this statement is false. If the statement is true, then isn't it actually false? But if it false, then the statement is true. Thus, this statement is a paradox because it is both true and false at the same time. So, that is for under semantic oddity. We have Pleionism, Periplasis, Tautology, Oxymoron, and Paradox. So, let's proceed to number two, the transference of meaning. So, according to Leak classification, transference of meaning is classified into four types of figurative language. So, under transference of meaning, we have number one, synecdoche comes from the Greek word meaning simultaneous understanding. It is a type of figurative speech used as attacking human's characteristic to a non-human object. So, a synecdoche is a literary, literary devices in which part of something is used to represent the whole or vice versa. It is similar to metony metonymy. However, a meto metonym doesn't have to represent the whole just something aso associated with the word uses. So, for example, help me out, I need some hands. So, in this case, the word hands, o yung kamay, is being used to refer to the people. So, meaning, may isang taong umihingi ng tulong, but instead of saying, um, I need some help from the human, uh, they just said, I need some hands. So, that is the whole human, essentially. So, another example. So, the captain commands 100 sails. It is a synecdoche that uses sails. Because when the captain said 100 sails, the captain is refer referring to a ship or... Or another example, we said we said the word bling as a jewelry. Or instead of saying soldier, we said we say it boots. So that is for snack the key. Next, number two, we have metonymy. A metonymy is when a related or word. Oh, sorry, meta. Metonymy is a figure of speech in which a thing or concept is referred to by the name of something closely associated with the thing or concept. So, a metonymy is when a related word or a phrase is substituted for actual thing to which is referring to which it's referring. So, this device is usually used for poetic or rhetorical effect. So, for example, the pen is mightier than the sword. So this statement, which was coined by Edward Bulwer Lytton in 1839, contains two examples of metonymy. So the pen refers to the written word and the sword refers to the military force or violence. So another example, when we say suit, it is refer referring to the business executives. And when we say the word truck, it is referring for the whole for the horse 
racing. So that is for metonymy. And number three, we have a metaphor. Metaphor is a figure of speech that is used to make a comparison between two things that aren't alike but do have something in common. So example, her tears were a river flowing down on her cheeks. So, so metaphors are when ideas, action, or objects are described in non-literal terms. In short, it's when author compares one thing to another. So, nagko-compare siya sa one thing to another thing. The two things being described usually share something in common but are unlike in all other aspects. So, for example, another example. What light, the, the phrase, what light through yonder window breaks. It is, so, it is referring to the east and Juliet is the sun. Um, this phrase comes comes from the famous from famous line from Romeo and Juliet. So in this phrase, Romeo compares Juliet to the sun. So it is called the metaphor. So in metaphor, you just um, you just you just need to compare to have a comparison between two things that aren't alike but do some do have something in common so next we have the simile simile is a type of metaphor in which an object idea character action is compared to another thing using the word as or like so alam naman natin kapag uh, simile we are comparing two things using using like or as so for example she is vicious as a lion or you were brave as a lion so since this statement uses the word as to make a comparison between she and a lion it is a simile because we are comparing two things so let us just remember that both Metaphors and similes are often used in writing for clarity and emphasizing a word or phrase. So, so that is for um, under transference of meaning. Again, we have synecdoche, metonymy, metaphors, and simile. And for the last cl classification of semantic deviation, we have honest deception so honest deception has three different types so number one we have hyperbole or hyperbole hyperbole is an exaggerated statement that's not meant to be taken literally by the reader it is often used for comedic effect or emphasizing emphasizing a word so for example I am so hungry I could eat a horse. So we are not go uh, the speaker is not literally going to eat an entire horse or eating a big horse. But this hyperbole emphasizes how starved the speaker feels. So yun nga. So yung speaker I hindi naman literal nakakain siya ng entire horse or yung buong horse. In uh so but instead, this hyperbole is emphasizing or pinapakita niya kung gaano kagutom or kung gaano nagsistarb yung kung gaano nagsistarb yung speaker. So number two, we have light this. So light this. Next slide. Light this is a figure of speech and the form of understatement in which a sentiment is expressed by negating contrary. So, for example, the phrase, I don't hate it. So, the, the phrase, I don't hate it, reflects uses of light to this. In this case, juxtaposing the negative words, don't, the words don't, and the hate, so, function together, to indicate the opposite meaning or a affirmative. So another example, 
is when we are saying it's not the best weather today so if uh, if you are just saying it during a hurricane it would be an example of like this because if you are implying through ironic understatement that the weather is in fact horrible so the fact na alam natin na ang weather weather is horrible magsa magsasalita pa tayo ng it's not the best weather today so parang ganun ganun yung pagkakaintindi ko ng light light cities so for the last part we have irony so irony is the definition of irony as a literary device literary device is a situation in which there is a contrast between expectation and reality so irony is when a statement is used to express an opposite meaning than the one literally literary re, literally expressed by it so there are so dagdag ko lang po there are three types of irony and literature so we have verbal irony situational irony and dramatic irony so for example we have um the fact na alam natin na my hurricane or my typhoon pero we just say it yung yung kabaliktara na what a nice weather we're having kahit alam naman talaga natin na hindi nice yung weather so another example is a pilot has fear of heights so knowing na pilot siya driver uh, parang yung driver siya ng airplane na sa mataas pero siya ay may takot sa matataas and another example a fire station burns down so so ano siya knowing na a fire station taga parang taga stop or taga puksa ng apoy pero yun pala yung burns down so sa irony parang yung yung situation na pinapakita niya is yung contrast between the expectation of a reality ng isang sitwasyon so yung parang ganun po so that is for the the third classification of semantic deviation we have hyperbole lightities and irony so thank you so much po sana po ay may natutunan kayo bye